wrestled through the questions of how do we how do we keep our people safe it was an immediate next question of all right well there's a lot of science going on um you know we don't want that to come to a dead halt the first thing we did is we looked really critically across our portfolio of science and said all right well what are the things that we really need to to safely get in and shut down um because you can't just drop everything on a dime so things like cell lines and mouse colonies um need to, need to do the work to shut them down safely um, so how can you get someone in for a couple hours even just to shut those things down safely and put them in the freezer? Um, and then the second area was my group is is really 50-50 computational and experimental. Um, and so can what are the things that the experimentalists can do to work on um, you know, doing data analysis of things that they've done, to work on training programs? What are the computational and remote activities that they can do that will further their research? Um, and may not require them to be in the lab. Oddly, this was an incredibly prolific period for, for some of the science. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're in the flow of the science, uh, you know, you're, you're moving as quickly as you can, you're trying to push and push and push, and you don't always take the breath that is really valuable. So my students are really sick of me saying this, but, you know, I have this phrase that sometimes you have to slow down to go faster. Um, and it's really about taking those pauses and taking a look at the gestalt of all of your data and saying, well, what does this really mean? How do these things fit together? How do I, uh, how do I bring this to conclusion? Do I, did I really have to do this experiment? Or um, you know, maybe I can take data from here and here and here and get to that result. Um, and so uh, what ended up happening is we went back and looked at a lot of data that we collected over the last several years we worked on some projects that really were in the final stages. They needed data analysis and we did that probably deeper and better than we might have done otherwise. Um, submitted some papers on some results that we've been working on for a while. So we've taken a pretty conservative approach to reopening. If it needs to be done on site, those are the only things that we're, we're letting happen on site. So um, if it can be done remotely, we're continuing to do things remotely. It's forced us to prioritize and to design experiments that can be accomplished in a very compact amount of time so that we're not, uh, I think there's a lot of time when you're designing an experiment, when you're thinking about things that can be done remotely. And so what we've really done is we've tried to separate the execution of experiments from the planning and analysis of experiments. And that allows people to be in the building in a focused small amount of time to get in, get their work done, uh, that has to be done on site and then get out. Stanford's executed a very large number of safety approaches. So, you know, number one is a health check-in so that anybody who's gonna be on site needs to, you know, check to make sure they don't have any symptoms, to fill in uh, an, a, a form that says, hey, I'm gonna be here on site, which is important for contact tracing. Masks are required throughout the building. Um, there have also been additional rulings about the number of people that can occupy a given space. Um, there's been a lot of work, um, as well as additional cleaning, to really make sure that the environment is as safe as possible. And so if you couple that work alongside the efforts that have been made to minimize the number of people in the building, um, it's, really been, um, it's really been a great balance of keeping people safe while ensuring that the science that needs to be done, the experimental science that needs to be done on site can proceed.